ladies and gentlemen, this is Game of Trades. We are truly living a historical moment for the stock market. If you're new to trading, new to investing in the stock market, remember this moment. This is the biggest single 50 day move in the history of the stock market. This is one of those rare moments where you'll see hedge fund managers and average retail investors in complete shock at what's happening. So in this video, we're going to talk about why the stock market is going parabolic. Has that damaged the bear market scenario that we've had for a while and what we're going to be able to do to position ourselves to take advantage of this crazy market of this crazy move that we've seen recently. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoy this type of content. Now let's first talk about the bear market thesis. We started looking at the overvalued prices of the S&P 500 around here, uh, end of 2019. We looked at the extreme greed that was happening on this move up. We had extreme low put call ratios and we started seeing divergence on the momentum of this move up uh, with divergence on the MACD. Uh, you can see right here, price was continuing up and the MACD was weighing down and we prepared ourselves for a big move down. So we managed to trade uh, almost the entire move down uh, starting from this gap down. We traded that dead cat bounds and then al almost all the way uh, to the bottom. I think we stopped at around 2,400 points. And since that move, we've had a bear market uh, thesis. We've had a bear market bias in mind. And so before the markets bottomed, uh, right here, we talked about a bear market rally uh, coming. So we reversed our shorts and made a quick 15% uh, trade all the way to 2,600. And then we went back to 2008. We went back to 2000 and we looked at the previous bear market rallies. And we talked about the fact that bear market rallies can last up to 70 trading days and can run up to the 50 retracement level. And so if we measure the Fib levels uh, from the top, to the bottom right here, we expected a maximum move up to the 50 retracement level, considering the fundamental situation that was going absolutely crazy, bad news all over the place. Anything above that 50 retracement seemed completely crazy. But if you were ambitious, you could have tried to trade uh, from the bottom all the way to the 50 retracement uh, for a 27% uh, move up. And now comes a very important part of the video. And this is something I've discussed extensively with our trading strategy. Anything above the 50 retracement level was just not worth it for a long position. The markets were already overextended. We had a huge resistance above, huge moving averages right above. And so the opportunity to the downside was much greater than the opportunity to the upside. And so chasing a breakout above these levels was definitely possible, but it did not fit into our strategy. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know we have very specific rules. We have a very unique trading strategy that helps us be profitable long term. On this move up, we actually waited for a big move for a big, big part of that move up. We had three separate entries on that trade. We had a one to 2% stop loss here, a one to 2% stop loss here, and then we finally uh, traded that big move down. And so if you've been part of the community for a while, you'll know that around 90% of the time we wait and watch the charts for an opportunity to arise. And you have to remember there are always other opportunities in the S&P 500 to make profits with swing trading with this specific strategy. Just recently, we had a beautiful trade on sugar. I'm going to show you the sugar chart. We had those exact same rules set up for the sugar futures. We had a nice clean trend line right here. We had divergence with the price and the MACD going in opposite directions. And then we had a beautiful, clean, impulsive break of that trend line. And so far, that's worth around a nice 20% profit from that break of trend line. And many of these commodities like uh, sugar and, and coffee, we've talked about on the channel and are likely to enter new bull markets in the coming years with all the liquidity coming into the economy. There's likely to be a very big inflation of these types of commodities in the coming years. And these are volatile asset classes. I mean, look at sugar from the bottom here on just this move up 
in 100 days you had a 50% move up. So going back to the S&P 500, the bear market thesis has definitely been damaged with this recent breakout. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Now don't get me wrong, the markets are heavily overextended right now. This is a parabolic move. And if we look at the put call ratio, this is a chart going back two years. And you can see where we're at right now. This is the 0.37 ratio. It's the number of people betting that the markets are going to go down divided by the number of people betting that the markets are going to go up. And this is often used as a contrarian indicator. You can see this was the bottom of the March crash. The put call ratio was at very, very high levels. And so if you go against this extreme reading, you're likely to be very profitable. And I do think that's still the case right now. If you go against this extreme reading, you're likely to be very profitable in the coming weeks. So again, going back to the S&P 500, I think this pullback we're going to see right here, probably on a break of this trend line, on an impulsive break of this trend line, this is going to be a significant pullback. We can put a couple of levels to watch right here, this the, the, the bottom of this gap right here, which also has a reaction right here. You've got these moving averages that may act as support, and then you've got a nice level right here to watch as well. These are all targets for a short trade on a break of that trend line. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, that pullback that we're going to see right now, that we're going to see likely in the coming weeks will be very decisive as to what's going to happen. We have to watch what levels hold on the charts and how much they bounce off of that level and how far the bounce uh, potentially goes. Now, of course, I'm, I'm talking as if the break of trend line will happen now. It doesn't have to happen now. It can still go on. We're on a very, very strong uptrend right now, so it can still potentially fill that gap before turning around. We'll have to see. But the fact of the matter is that the bear market scenario we've been laying out for this entire move up and the first part of this rally here has been damaged. If we look at the retracement levels from the top to the bottom over here, you can see we've broken the 61.8 retracement level. Now, why is this significant? If you go back to all bear market rallies, they were all contained by the 61.8 retracement level. We also broke that 200 moving average. We also broke that 200 exponential moving average. So these are all bullish developments, bullish long-term developments. Now, of course, you can have intra-month breaks above these and then the price turns back and, and falls back below. But the fact of the matter is, the higher the price goes away from these moving averages, the least likely the price is going to come back below them. Now let's discuss the most important part of the video. Why do I say that the stock market bubble is re-inflating? First of all, a bubble is when you get a disconnect between the markets and the fundamentals. So in other words, the price is overvalued. And that's something we've taken a look at over the past months. If we look at the PE ratio, this is the S&P 500 price earnings ratio. And you can see it usually lies between overvalued right here and undervalued right here. Price tends to bounce between this range right here. And that's been the case for around 150 years. But now since around the dot com bubble, we've seen price consistently stay above the overvalued range. And so right now we're sitting around here, the 20 PE ratio, but with the earnings of companies that are going to absolutely crash, we're going to see the PE ratio absolutely skyrocket. And so we're going to see a very similar line here uh, to 2008 right here, where the PE ratio just goes off the charts. But apparently, the Fed's stimulus has brought enough liquidity to break very significant technical levels. Part of the actual money that they're printing is flowing directly into stocks. I've seen many articles talking about the stimulus checks actually being directly invested into the stock market. And we can also look at the long term interest rates. These are the long term interest rates over the past hundred years. And you can see since around uh, 1980 right here, the interest rates have been going down. And that's a big part of what pushes stocks up. People don't want to save their money anymore. And so instead, they invest that money into asset classes like stocks. And so right now, uh, the Fed has announced that interest rates are around zero. And so that's another thing that's really pushing the markets higher right now. They're really trying to keep those stocks overvalued. And with all the money that they're printing, they're really 
giving people no choice. The US dollar is likely to have a huge devaluation in the coming years because of all the money supply going into the economy. And so anyone with savings and a brain will invest their money somewhere else than just cash. Now we can also take a look at the S&P 500 versus tech. This is a chart from Macro Charts. It's a very interesting Twitter account with lots of interesting charts. And you can see this is the S&P 500 tech versus just the S&P 500 ratio. And you can see the proportion of the tech in the S&P 500 is really at levels very similar to the dot-com bubble. And so considering that the tech industry has really not been that damaged from the entire situation and investors are actually speculating that they'll profit from the situation well logically the well that's really pushing the s p 500 up so all of these factors low interest rates fed liquidity future inflation all of that is pushing the stock market higher now how long would that last is the real question i think we're going to enter a very interesting period of time where everyone knows that stocks are completely overvalued and yet they stay overvalued. And so all of these factors were present before the March crash. And so it was very reasonable to assume that the epidemic would be the mass event needed to pop these bubbles. But now stocks are showing signs that the bubble may continue. And so we're gonna have to really be on the lookout for the market's next move. The next pullback will be decisive. And I know this video is starting to run a bit long, but I do want to discuss the fact that this is not something that is going to last forever. And the simple reason for that is that we're going to see inflation in the next few years with all the money that's being printed. And when the velocity of money starts picking back up, when things start really turning again around the economy, we're going to see that inflation present. We're going to see prices skyrocketing and the Fed is going to have increase the interest rates and that's when the bubble really is going to pop because they're going to have the choice between having hyperinflation or an overvalued stock market so all we can do is watch the charts watch the levels and respect our trading strategy now that's about all i wanted to cover in this video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already in the meantime good luck on your trading and see you next time